Take a nice deep breath wherever you are. Does it feel good? Hopefully it does, unless maybe you're in the middle of a smoggy Beijing or New Day, or somewhere in the Jersey Turnpike. Enjoy that breath anyway. We very often forget we're breathing, and for good reason. If we were conscious of every single breath we took, we'd go crazy. Over the course of a lifetime, the average person who lives to 80 takes around 672 million breaths. Savor one every now and then, because all that nice oxygen on Earth won't be around forever. Welcome to Fact Nominal. Today, oxygen. Are we running out of it here on Earth? And if we are, can we do anything about it? Really, um, so little goes to protecting our planet. When you think, think of all of philanthropy, only 2% of philanthropy and, and giving, and we're systematically um, polluting it. We're chopping down rainforests, destroying coral reef systems. Every day, our sun is getting hotter and radiating more energy out towards Earth. One day, that radiation will grow to the point where it blasts away most of the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. With little to no CO2, photosynthesizing organisms like plants and algae will go extinct. When that happens, they won't be producing any oxygen. There will be a million times less of the life-giving element floating around and the Earth will rapidly revert to a lifeless ball with an atmosphere that consists of mostly methane gas. We'll be left with a green, eerie rock that will look a lot like it did some 2.5 billion years ago. Scientists have run over 400,000 simulations recently to get to this hypothesis. But don't worry, they predict that it'll happen in about a billion years. Plenty of time to prepare, right? But the truth is, if we humans are around in a billion years, we probably won't even really be human. Maybe we'll be some advanced version of ourselves or robotic, like in Terminator. Maybe we'll be virtual, disembodied networks of consciousness. A lot can happen between now and then. But let's have a little fun and do a thought experiment. Assuming some iteration of humans are alive when the deoxidization of Earth does happen, what can they do about it? The truth is, if we somehow continue to exist for another billion years, those people will be so advanced that whatever technology they possess will, to us today, be indistinguishable from magic. This is paraphrased from a famous Arthur C. Clarke quote. And if we connect it to something called the Kardashev scale, we can maybe begin to speculate about what those technologies might be and why it probably won't matter, for us anyway, if the Earth lost its oxygen. Back in 1964, a Soviet astronomer named Nikolai Kardashev created the Kardashev scale, which measures a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy it can harness and use. He came up with three types of civilization, type 1, type 2, and type 3. We humans aren't even on this scale. We're technically type 0. According to physicist and futurist Michio Kaku, if we humans increase our energy consumption by 3% each year, it might take us another 100 to 200 years for us to reach type 1. That is, if we don't destroy ourselves first. Kaku goes on to speculate that it would take another 100,000 to a million years for us to reach Type 3 status. So where could we be in a billion years when Earth is set to run out of oxygen? Some scientists have speculated even further, proposing Type 4 and 5 civilizations. But the truth is, the technology at that point would truly be in the realm of magic, and losing oxygen on little old Earth would be no problem at all. We'd be intergalactic travelers capable of creating solar systems and stars from scratch. But let's think about a different scenario, one that may be more likely. Let's say that we humans go extinct. Not a nice thought, but if we're talking about a billion years, it's entirely possible. We humans go extinct, and another species evolves to the point where we are now. Maybe after we're gone, chimps and bonobos evolve again into a second version of the human. 
What if oxygen is still an imminent threat and they're still a type zero civilization? Earth is the only option they have. Is this species doomed? Maybe not. We humans have already developed working biospheres here on Earth, and any species with the technology equivalent to ours might be able to do the same, on a scale large enough to save at least some of their population. Humanity's largest one to date is called Biosphere 2, with Biosphere 1 being, well, Earth's biosphere. It was built out in the Arizona desert back in the early 90s, and it's still running. It's a massive, three-acre, self-sustaining complex complete with a rainforest, a desert, a simulated ocean and coral reef, rain, and self-sustaining oxygen supply. But when a team set out to live in Biosphere 2 for two years to prove the bubble was a viable option for recreating Earth's environment on alien planets, they had some serious problems. Only a couple months into their stay, they realized the oxygen supply was far from self-sustaining and that they'd suffocate if they didn't pump outside oxygen into the complex. They eventually found out that their oxygen was being eaten up by a combination of microbes in the soil and chemical reactions from concrete used to build the complex that hadn't been cured long enough. So, if a future earthly civilization wants to survive the coming deoxidization apocalypse, they'd better work out the kinks in their biosphere designs if they want to keep on living. But how and when did all this oxygen get into Earth's atmosphere in the first place? Answering these questions, aside from being just good things to know for anyone curious about the origins of life on our planet, could actually help us find good conditions for life on other planets. Recent research has shed light on something called the Great Oxidation Event. Some 2.5 billion years ago, oxygen levels on our planet were next to nothing. The air was mostly methane and carbon dioxide. There was life, but that life consisted of anaerobic single-celled organisms that didn't need oxygen. Then, two things happened, but in which order nobody's sure. One of them was the evolution of cyanobacteria. These little single-celled creatures were able to oxidize water to create energy. They were little oxygen-producing cells that spread all over the world. Around the same time, plate tectonics began to happen as the Earth's crust sank into the mantle at different points, creating mountains and moving continents, things called subduction zones were created, where superheated magma met cold, dense water at the bottom of the ocean. That ocean water traveled hundreds of miles into Earth's core, and through mechanisms still unknown, oxygen was freed up, became part of the mantle, and then spewed into the water and atmosphere via volcanoes leading to higher oxygen levels. Knowing this can help our quest to find other habitable planets hiding out in the galaxy. They may not have oxygen at the moment, but if they have an active core, there's a chance that the building blocks are still there. Will our planet ever run out of oxygen? Do you think we'll find any other habitable zones in the near future? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing fact-nominal content.